First one, how do you measure success at work? I generally only get a feel on my performance during the end of year or mid-year reviews, but I'm wondering if there's anything else I should be doing to figure out how I'm performing day to day. We actually had a big production meeting this morning where we talked about putting tigers with tigers and gorillas with gorillas and lions with lions where people are organized. But the other reason we're doing that is people should have clarity on what their job is. They should have clarity on what success looks like and they should have clarity in who their boss is and what their boss is looking for. I would say to the earlier rant, we have not done a great job of this. I think we've been growing so fast, it's just like catch a tiger by the tail and you're just moving, moving, moving. But we're going to get better at that. So if you really care about being successful at work, have a decent sense of what the company cares about. So if you're asked, what, what does success look like for Barstool Sports? Right, if you work here, you say, what does success look like for Barstool Sports? One of the things I think I need to do a better job is to constantly articulate that. For us, it's growing audience. It's making great IP. It's maximizing our revenue in a diverse format. It's using data to be smarter and sharper and more efficient at what we do. And it's having a highly collaborative team environment. Like those are our company goals. Yes, we have revenue targets. Yes, we have audience targets. Yes, we have engagement targets. But I wanna to try to do a better job here, for example, of making sure that everyone at this company understands what the goals are. So for you, make sure you understand like what the company cares about. Is it their stock price? Is it selling a certain volume of products? If you work for a, pump, if you work for a public company, go read the financial materials, like have a good sense of what matters for the company and then drill down, right? What does your division have to do for the company? What does your team have to do for the company? How do you fit into what the company wants to do? And then all the way down, by the time it gets to you, understand what you do, what that means for your group, for your team, for your division, and for the company. Get a one-on-one -on -one with your manager ASAP. Ask your manager bluntly, what does success look like for me? What is it you really value? Um, what, what is the single highest purpose for me here? What is the single best output from my time at X company? right? What can I be doing to help you, to help the team, to help the group, to help the company succeed? Have answers for those things. Keep track of your own performance. It is your job to make sure you're keeping track of what you're doing and how that ladders up to what you should be doing or what your group or your manager or your company values. And then force the conversation. Maybe your company doesn't have like regular reviews or regular one-on-ones. Ask for an impromptu one-on-one. -on -one. Pick up the phone and call your boss one afternoon and be like, hey, just wanted to check in. How are things going for you? How do you think th things are going for me? Like, Take the initiative to ask for the conversation. It's your career at the end of the day. Your manager only cares about you in the way that you're gonna help your manager and the company be successful. You have to be the single biggest advocate for your career and understanding how you're performing should be something that you want, not that you just care about because of, of how somebody else feels or how somebody's gonna evaluate that. So I would take initiative, I would understand things from the top to the bottom, and I would be proactive in getting a pulse check on a very frequent basis, let's say monthly basis in between. Okay, hi, this says. Um, do you have any suggestions for someone who's naturally nervous for interviews or public speaking? I'm extremely confident in my job, but when it comes to people interviewing me, it's like I'm a completely different person. Any suggestions or tips on confidence would be greatly appreciated. Ooh, this is a good one. I'm gonna have Tom Mullins help me with this one. One is, isn't it the worst when you get nervous and then your voice gets shaky and you're like, oh, like, I hate that. That happens to everyone, that happens to me. There's like the Brady Bunch show where like, imagine them naked. Yeah. You, got, you can have like, imagine your audience or imagine your interviewer naked. The other thing is if you're getting intimidated by some, someone, just remember like they did something very average this morning. Like they put on their socks, they pooped. Do you know what I mean? Like the person you're interviewing with is a human and they did something very natural and normal like you do. Um, I think the other thing that you can do is sometimes I tend to ramble or like get caught in a tangent or space out. And sometimes it's great to just bring like a note card or like a piece of paper 
Um, or if you're not great at expressing things in an interview, like orally, like if it's hard to speak it, maybe like you bring a sheet to guide you and you're like, hey, I just wanted to you know, share here are some things that I've done or I don't think anybody wants to read your resume in an interview, but give yourself some type of prop that can help you guide the conversation. To me, it's like you just got to get through the first three sentences and then it kind of goes from there. I also, I feel like it's very helpful, like, at least if I were to be interviewing for a job in my field, it's something I'm very passionate about. So it's sort of easy for me to mm -hmm. speak about something like yeah, that. Yeah, that you care about. So I feel like maybe you just have to remember that if you're going for this job, it's what you want, you know? So I feel I like that. you better be passionate. Yeah, in the passion interview. overrides like polish. Yeah, like it, if someone came up to me and started asking me about like some documentary that I started to make or something, I would be ecstatic to speak about that. Talk their ear off. Exactly. The other thing is don't, I think women kind of struggle with this in particular, which is you always make yourself like you subjugate yourself to someone else or you make yourself inferior. Like you're great. You know what I mean? You're great. If, if this person thinks you're a fucking idiot and they don't hire you, like that's okay. That doesn't mean you're not great. That just means you and that person were never going to be a great fit. And that person does not deserve to be your boss. So like, don't, don't make yourself, don't make yourself diminutive. All right. Third question, Erica, I'm stuck. Yeah. Welcome to the club. I have no clue what my passions are. What even is a hobby at this point? I want to make a career out of something I'm passionate about but I'm not in a position to seek and gain experience for free, even though I know that's the best way to test out what I want. I also cannot spend another dime on schooling and don't even know how to figure out my next move. What do you recommend to someone in their 30s going through this? Whew, that's a lot. Okay, one is you've got to fucking be passionate about something. So if you don't know what you're passionate about, like you got to take a TV time out and reassess. Being passionate doesn't mean you're passionate about like lifestyle photography or fashion or sports or documentaries. Like you can be passionate about helping, helping other people. You can be passionate about getting tasks done and fixing problems. You can be passionate about a beautiful PowerPoint deck. You could be passionate about making Excel spreadsheets and having the numbers all add up at the bottom. I am not passionate about that. But the other thing I think about it is, one, stop spending money on schooling. Okay, so let, let me, let's dig into this problem. One, don't spend any more money on schooling. Two is, if you're passionate about lifestyle photography, sports, fashion, whatever, like stop focusing on just getting a job in that area. Change the focus. I think of what you're passionate about. I think you, this person, you are looking for like a big lofty answer when in reality to get unstuck, it's not one big giant step. It's like 50 little steps. So you got to figure out the little steps. Do you have a job now? Do you like that job? Do you want to stay in that job? If the answer is yes, then figure out what is, are the little things you can do to move to a better place in that company or to advance your career or to take a step up. If you don't have a job, then figure out what it is you actually like to do at work. Put aside the big lofty thing. Do you like to add numbers? Do you like to write? Do you like to read? Do you like to research? What are you good at at work? Everybody's good at something at work. What are you good at? I'd also write what you're bad at and what you don't care about because you should not pursue jobs that are really focused on things you're bad at or don't care about. Um, the third thing is you got to just take some initiative. You got to have conversations. You got to talk to people. You got to apply to jobs. You're going to get rejected from like 99.95% of them. All you need is one acceptance, but you've got to take some initiative. Like the only way out of your inertia is action and you should take some action. Um, and then your path is going to lead, you know, you're going to get on a path and it's going to, it's going to, you're going to find your way. Maybe you take a job. Maybe you hate that job. That's okay. You, now you know what you don't like. You can add something to the don't like bucket and you can go find your next one. But I think the biggest thing is don't get caught in the lofty things. Start small and take action. <laughs>